Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's we're going to be comparing the new Ford Raptor to the Silverado ZR2 Bison. Before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Carl Malone Chevy and the Carl Malone Ford here in Park City for giving me some time with both of the trucks. I'll include a link to their website in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. So with the ZR2, you can get two different engine options, a 6.2 liter V8 naturally aspirated, puts out 420 horsepower and then 460 pound-feet of torque, or this Duramax diesel, three liter inline six turbo diesel, goes through a 10 speed. Fuel economy with this is 20 around town and then 22 on the highway. Power outputs are 305 horsepower and then 495 pound-feet of torque. Now with the Raptor, you also have two powertrain options available. The EcoBoost, which this one has, 3.5 liter twin turbo V6, goes through a 10 speed. 450 horsepower, 510 pound-feet of torque. Fuel economy is 14 around town and then 18 on the highway. You can also get a supercharged 5.2 liter V8, 720 horsepower, and then 640 pound-feet of torque with that one. Now, before we move forward with this review, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the ZR2, this has the Bison package, which I think is the most comparable to a Raptor because you've got this upgraded front bumper from AEV. You also get extra skid plate protection underneath. And really what this Bison package is about with the ZR2 is turning it into kind of more of like an overland build with the truck. Uh, hence this big, heavy bumper that's not going to be as good with high-speed off-roading, but it's going to be able to take some impacts with the rock crawling. Now with the Raptor, on the other hand, this one has the 37 Performance package. And so you've got this new modular bumper here at the bottom. It's also finished in shelter green, which is a really cool color. But yeah, you can tell with how the bumper is sculpted and everything, it's more about high speed Baja driving rather than rock crawling. But there's the front ends. Now with the ZR2, as of right now, the biggest tires you can get are 33s. Uh, they are wrapped around 18 inch wheels, if you are wondering on that. With the Raptor, on the other hand, you can get 35s or 37s. This one has the 37s, as you can see, pretty big tires. Uh, so yeah, those are the two options. Uh, hopefully the ZR2 has 35s in the future. Anyways, look at the difference with the fender flares on these trucks. The ZR2s are a lot more reasonably sized. And then the Raptor has these cool kind of like off-road side steps. You can get rock rails on the ZR2. This particular one just doesn't happen to have them. Interesting to see the difference in the mirror height because the Ford's window slopes down. Also, look at the cab height. Even though the Ford has bigger tires, it's actually not that much taller than the ZR2. But anywho, here's your full side view with the ZR2. It has that nice leveled look front to rear. And then here's a side profile with the Raptor. The front end almost kind of sits a little bit higher than the back end, so it gives it an interesting appearance. Now, a big difference with these trucks is shocks. The ZR2 has multi-matic shocks, multi-chamber system, uh, but it's a fixed system. Whereas the Raptor has live valve Fox shocks on its 37 package. It's the dual valve shocks, so they're constantly adjusting. Now when it comes to beds, uh, they're actually pretty similar in size and functionality. You can see you've got lights here in the Raptor. And then you got an outlet there as well, Ford's bed step system. And I do think this is automatically, oh, normally got the auto raise function. Anyways, with the Silverado, you can see bed liner. LED lights, we've got an outlet, it's very similar. Uh, this one has the multi-flex, so no auto raise. You do have to lift it up yourself. Interesting to see the design difference with the rears of the trucks here. With the Raptor, again, you can see the bumper. Look how it's sculpted. And then look at the bumper here on the ZR2. You can see, again, it's kind of like chunkier to be better at the low speed crawling compared to the Raptor. And I like the taillight difference between them too. It's crazy to see all that. But anyways, let me know if you like the wide body Baja appearance of the Raptor more, or if you like the more standard kind of body appearance of the Silverado. Now, legroom in the back of the Raptor is fantastic. Got this nice trim here at the top. You can see like the carbon fiber trim as well. Speaker for the Bang Olsen sound system. And then really nice leather seats here in the Raptor. And then headroom back here, it's good. Now in the back of the ZR2, just as spacious as the Ford. You see different design with the door panel. The Ford's kind of sporty. This is more like just rugged, functional, and tight fit and finish too. And then you have these easy to clean seats with it as well. And then heading back here, it's good. And popping into the Ford. Ooh. 
So again with the front door panel, really nice trim. And then you can see payload is 1,298 pounds, this truck. Got a very sporty steering wheel. So like, look at the grips here on the side. Really aggressive, big paddle shifters. Raptor logo there at the bottom. And we've got this full digital gauge cluster. This is where you can see the different drive modes with the Raptor. We also have a 360 camera system with the Raptor. This comes with stuff like trail control as well. And then we do have dual zone climate, heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel. And then we've got an advanced four wheel drive system, rear locking differential. And then you can see the whole center. This has the workbench center console too. This is nice with the center console design done here. I like the carbon fiber on the glove box too. I think that's pretty cool. Power sliding rear window. Uh, and then we do have a panoramic sunroof and six auxiliary switches. That is quite a bit. And starting her up with the ZR2. Payload on this, interestingly enough, is less. 1,116 pounds, even though it says leaf springs. Look at the door panel on this. And just a traditional Chevy steering wheel. They don't do anything crazy for the ZR2. And then you can see with the gauge cluster, fully digital. Got different drive modes, less drive modes than the Raptor. And then we do have a 360 camera system. I do prefer Chevys to Fords. It's just a little bit easier to use. Resolution on both of them is good though. And then infotainment systems, I didn't really go over the Fords too much, but they're both pretty similar in terms of how easy they are to use. Bunch of physical buttons, important stuff. Hill descent control, and then we have a front and rear locking differential. So the Ford just had a rear locker. This has both front and rear, and buttons are right there. Dual zone climate, heated and ventilated seats. Got your trailer brake controls. Then you can see the little storage area here with the shifter. Center console. I do think Ford center console is a little bit better with the storage. I like this trim uh, it's on the dash, too. It's just nice. Also, the camera rear view mirror, which is pretty cool. Uh, no center for this, interestingly enough. Um, but I forgot to mention the glove boxes. Double, just like the Ford. Nice trim on the outside. When it comes to pricing, the Raptor stickers for about 93K, whereas the Silverado stickers for about 82K. Now, something to note, if you get a Raptor with a 35 package, most of them that I've been seeing at dealers are about 82,000. So basically, the entry level Raptor is about the price you get for the fully loaded ZR2 Bison. We are going to set off in the Raptor first, and then we'll drive the ZR2 second to see which off-road truck performs the best. Again, they're going for two completely different things when it comes to off-roading. The Raptor, the high-speed Baja off-roading, or is the ZR2 is going for more overlanding. Both of them can do high speed and low speed, but you know, again, they're both geared towards different things. So first off, the Raptor, incredibly smooth. It's got that cloud-like driving experience. Part of it's the wheelbase. Uh, the new F-150 in general has just got comfortable suspension, but also those huge 37-inch tall tires help out quite a bit. And then the Fox shocks adjusting for the road constantly also help out quite a bit as well. Not too much wind noise. It's a pretty windy day today, and it's not bad at all. Smooth ride, like I said. And the seats are pretty comfortable too in the Raptor. They got the they got more aggressive bolstering, so they hold you in place. But they're also, you know, not super hard like you might have with some vehicles like the you know the raptor R with its kind of with its recaro seats those those bucket seats are pretty pretty harsh they're they're pretty not the worst but they're, they're definitely a little more a little more difficult i guess we could say now this will be fun this will be kind of like our little test here so we got some bumps Yeah, it handles, I mean, not the best test ever, but I just I just want to see how the two trucks handle those bumps. Let's see what the turning radius is like, too. Not bad. We're just in two-wheel high. Power 
feels more than adequate. I mean, we're at 7,000 feet. This turbocharged engine does fine. Not going full, full throttle, but you know, not a problem whatsoever. So, some things up with the Raptor drive. It drives like a Raptor. It's it's comfortable. The suspension's nice and squishy. But the Raptor also, you know, you put in sport mode with the shocks and sport, and it's it's got tight handling. So it's kind of like a, you know, because of the Baja stuff, it's like a sport truck. That's a good way to describe it with the on-road driving is it's more on the sporty side of things. Well, setting off in the ZR2 now, and right off the bat, this feels like a more traditional truck, without even getting on the road. Just with the, the Raptor has a lightweight, feel, nimble feel to it, but it's so wide that it, it still feels big because of the width. This feels big, but it's because it has that big kind of like planted truck feel. Now this is down on horsepower and torque compared to the Raptor, but it's got a diesel. And the diesel just, it feels so good. Such a nice powertrain. The difference is, even though this has less torque than the Raptor, this feels like it's got more punch on the low end compared to the Raptor. Which, yeah, I mean, it's not a huge torque difference, I guess. So five to 15 pound feet of torque more on the Raptor. Ride quality is actually, I wouldn't say, I mean, the Raptor is a little bit smoother on these things. Over the bumps, they're not too different actually, on their on-road, right? But yeah, the Raptor's probably a little bit, a little bit smoother. It's not as big of a difference as you'd think, on-road at least. So that hood bulge definitely is an interesting thing to see. Also, the camera rear view mirror helps out quite a bit. Wish that Ford would integrate that in their cars. Soon, maybe. See how it does through these little bumps for our turnaround area. Yeah, definitely not as controlled as the Raptor. Not as controlled. The Raptor was, yeah, with those adjustable shocks. Um, and that's, that's one of the big... It's one of the big differences with them is going to be the, the shocks and the wheel travel. The Raptor has more wheel travel, has shocks that are adjusting all the time, so it's just different. Turning radius is actually pretty similar. Although I love the torque, I will say the Raptor is definitely quicker. So to cap things off, these trucks ultimately are for two different uses off-road. This has more of an overlanding lean, whereas the Raptor is high-speed off-roading. So depending on what you're looking to do, will determine which of these, from an off-road perspective, makes more sense. When it comes to on-road driving, I think it's just gonna be a personality difference. The Raptor is kind of like, I wanna have a fun sports car-like experience in a pickup truck. Whereas this is more traditional pickup truck. I want like a, I wanna feel like I'm driving a diesel, but I don't wanna own a big, you know, HD diesel. And so that's kind of the, the difference there. Uh, what I will say is these ZR2s, I feel like they're rarer than the Raptors. They're not harder to get, but Ford pumps out so many of those Raptors. Like I see them everywhere. Whereas they don't see the ZR2s, especially with the Bison package as much. So there's a little bit more of a rare factor, I suppose, with it. So I mean, if you go to go, if I can't talk today, last day of my three day fast, let me know if you would go Raptor or if you would go 0-2 with the Bison.